Greetings, my fellow intellectuals and bookworms. Here's a surprise second political video for you. First of all, a little context. I've never talked about this issue with you as far as I know. Talked about it with others. Um, I know I'm walking into a geopolitical shit show, but I just don't give a fuck. I believe that taking a stand and telling the important issues is more important than seeking to avoid conflict and avoid offending people at all costs. So if you're offended, I don't give a fuck and, and go out the door anyway. So the video will, the article I'll be talking about refers to the Israel-Palestine conflict, which is a big shit show and is very controversial in the U.S. Basically, the U.S. supports Israel officially, government-wise, and in a lot of other ways. So um, we believe that they're the... A lot of politicians believe they're only the, they're the only democracy in the Middle East. As a result, we do everything to spite Palestinians, and it harms our reputation worldwide. And also, I don't think you can really be a democracy when you disenfranchise 20% of the population. Palestinians can't vote. They can't give government testi testimony. They can't be judges. They can't receive scholarships. Um, they basically have to have the equivalent of an internal passport. They can't travel, at least easily. Um, they get shot. They can't protest. Oh, and if they get protested, they get beaten the shit out of and then rounded up. And all sorts of other things. So, I believe that Palestinians are oppressed, and that's why I take their side. I also think that states like Texas that seek to ban boycott and divestment schemes in which we punish Israel for their bad behavior are wrong. But here we go. Here's what the article is on. It's on one of my favorite magazines that I look into getting for a while, The Economist, if you can see it. Every intellectual should have it. Here's the article itself. If you notice, this shows the data, which if you can't see it well, says Arabs may soon outnumber Jews in Israel in the occupied territories. Jews, 7 million. Most of them are in Israel proper, Jerusalem, West Bank. Arabs, 7.2 million, Gaza Strip, Israel, West Bank, and East Jerusalem by 2021. These are the settlements. East Jerusalem, 2 million Jews in it, basically. Um, now, then it has this pair, um, triangle type thing. Jewish electoral majority, two-state solution. They split the country into two, a Palestinian part and an Israeli part. I feel like that's politically untenable now, and there's too much Israeli settlements inside the Green Line that it's impossible. So that's probably a fail. Um, Apartheid-like state, control of all occupied lands. Um, Jewish Arab binational state, fully democratic state. Basically, it says p pick two. Um, I feel like at this point, a two-state solution is impossible. A binational state, which is what I like to call um, one nation, two states, in which you basically put, in which Israeli and Palestinian citizens are treated as citizens of this united nation, which is equally. I feel like that is politically hard, but I feel like it's the only solution. I feel, I don't think they'll choose it though. I think they'll choose the apartheid-like state thing. In which basically they try and oppress the other 50% of the population to keep Jewish control of the nation. And I think that'll go to shit almost immediately. And I here's why. I think that if Arabs are the majority in not just Gaza and not just East Jerusalem and the West Bank, but in Israel proper, I think if they're the majority, they'll. I mean, we've already had several intifadas when they weren't the majority. And I think the situation will get worse. I feel like Netanyahu will stay in power for a while, despite essentially abusing term limits and being a dictator. Um, and I feel like he'll basically try and oppress the Palestinian majority to keep them either quiet or to make this, or to try and get commentators like the U.S. not to do anything. But... I think it'll go horribly wrong. First of all, the IDF, Israel Defense Forces, even with mandatory conscription and basically all, all except for a few exemptions, being having to serve a year of military 
several years of military service after the end of college, I think that even with a good number of recruits like that, it's still going to be hard. First of all, you have all the people who refuse to fight, which is the reformed Jews or what have you, the extremely conservative ones. And then, and then you've got, and then even without all those problems, um, you're going to have to issue hard orders, and that's going to be a problem. Here's why. Um, you'll have to worry about the loyalty of all soldiers, especially when you give questionable orders. Here's the thing. I think that what will happen is that there will be an uprising in the Gaza Strip, which will have to be put down with the IDF, right? So uprising in the Gaza Strip. I also think there will be an uprising in the West Bank, which will basically require it to be put down, further dividing the IDF forces. And here's the thing. I think if though the since there's going to be basically 2 million in Israel proper as well, I feel like there's going to be an uprising in Israel proper as well with the Palestinians say we won't take this anymore. In which case, I see it be going to shit almost immediately. Here's why. Israel proper, um, e even if they say we need to keep the occupied territories because we're Jewish nationalists, the occupied territories are ours, therefore we need to keep them, feel like they'll also spend effort saying Israel proper can't be controlled by Palestinians as well. And what that means is is that they'll have to defy, divide their forces insanely high. They'll have to divide their forces for regular Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and the whole rest of the country, which means there'll be uprisings in every town. And here's the thing. They'll have to issue orders that involve sh um, basically shoot-to-kill policies. Your, your Palestinian neighbor who you've known for years and been friends with— well, he's now a part of the uprising. Shoot him. Your best friend, shoot him. Your tw your friend's 12-year-old kid, shoot him. Your 12-year-old student, shoot him. And I feel like that'll be a huge problem. So you'll have the rebellion going on of Palestinians. You might have an uprising among the Orthodox population. Because here's the thing. Realistically, you can't handle all these goals at once. So it means that if you with basically agree to withdraw from the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, the Orthodox Jews, very conservative and ultra-nationalist, will essentially uprise. Now you'll have to put down another one. So you avoided two uprisings, but now you have to put down another one. So any pullout would be politically impossible, which means you'd have to commit soldiers into a fight you couldn't win. Um then you, the military would be overstretched to begin with. And here's the thing. You'd have to issue orders that would be that unsavory. And I imagine that that could trigger a military uprising in which military units basically refuse to do anything ordered. In which case, a bunch of armed people, essentially with assault rifles, will be making trouble for the central government and will be shooting things up will be rebelling, won't be working, in which case I imagine that this Israel, Israel internal civil war will basically make the country a whole huge fucking mess. And I don't imagine there'll be practically anything you can do. Now, in the short term, someone like Netanyahu could basically declare a state of emergency, vote himself emergency powers, suspend term limits to allow him to stay in power to handle the crisis, but here's the thing, if he does something, like he'll have to power grab to restore order, but he's already seen as a dictator among a good deal of the international community. He'll be seen as even more of a dictator from his own citizens, who a good deal of his own citizens either don't support him or see him as a dictator. So by seeking to have more power to fix the crisis, he'll be creating a neg a positive feedback loop in which literally any action he takes will tr will expand the uprising, make it worse, right? So he won't be able to maintain law and order. Now, the U.S. might guarantee assistance and might say, we'll give you, we'll step up military aid to you, but I don't think it will do any, but I don't think even with more and more tanks, uh, Patriot missile defenses and what have you, I don't think that'll do shit. My thinking is, 
because even if the Palestinians temporarily stop launching rockets, um, what is a missile defense system? What is its use against your own citizens? And here's a question. If there's an uprising among the Jewish population in Tel Aviv, for example, can you drive a tank down the middle of the street and use it to gun down your own citizens without repercussions? I don't think so. You might be able to get away with gunning down Palestinians, but you can't gun down Jewish citizens with absolutely no rec- without any political cost or anything. In which case, you're just going to create more uprisings. Does that make sense? Because the international community, for example, sat by as a few years ago, or actually a year or two ago, there was an uprising in the Gaza Strip and Palestinians armed with rocks and kites with that were lit on fire and launched against crop fields, which did almost no damage, were um, essentially gunned down by IDF soldiers. I'm not kidding. They opened fire into the crowd, committing mass murder in an essential massacre, and the international community is just like, eh, and here's the thing, even in the Israeli press, it was called a massacre. And um, Netanyahu said, those people are national heroes. We're going to give them a medal. And the commander said, I don't care if it's considered mass murder. I don't give a fuck if it's a massacre. We're g- those people deserve heroes, deserve a medal, and we're going to protect them from prosecution. So just imagine that, but worse. They even gunned down a fucking medic who was rushing in to help, which is a violation of international law. So, I think that the peace process, which has already complicated and basically been frustrated, will just get even worse in this case. I imagine a full-out civil war, and if I'm cor- correct on this, I'll be even better at predicting the future. So, if you like this I guess, rant and explanation. Like, comment, and subscribe if you have not done so. This is Sean Hartnett from the channel Sean Hartnett wishing you a happy weekend.